All right, I'd like to call to order our July 21st, 2022 City Council Special Meeting starting at 3.01 p.m. Roll call, please. Here. 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 All right, everybody could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, does anybody have any additional deletions or modifications to the agenda? Nope. Nope, seeing none, we'll go on to item five, budget considerations. Item A, Idaho Humane Society. Dr. Jeff Rosenthal. Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and City Council. I uh, appreciate you having us uh, here for this uh, budget presentation. Um, I'm Jeff Rosenthal. I'm the CEO of the Idaho Humane Society. I, I guess I'm in my 22nd year at Idaho Humane. I also have Officer Tiffany Shields. She's the Director of uh, Animal Care and Control for the Idaho Humane Society. And she is here to add uh, any narrative or answer, address any questions, uh, in particular with our field services um, being uh, sometimes a little closer to that aspect. Or uh, if you want to complain about your neighbor's cat, uh, file a report. She's here for that, too. Um, starting off here, um, here are uh, the metrics from 2021 uh, uh, for for Eagle field calls. Uh, and what we're seeing is, is essentially, despite some growth in the valley, uh, our field calls are remaining fairly consistent, um, and shelter admissions are also remaining fairly consistent. Uh, every year there are certain trends that occur, and, and we don't always have, uh, uh, there's not always a rhyme or reason or, or something we can point to. I mean, COVID has, um, I think over the last few years, had some impacts where uh, on the one hand, uh, in some cases, we felt like there was fewer nuisance calls because people were home with their dogs, and most of the time dogs do naughty things that annoy the neighbors. It's because they have separation anxiety and their owners aren't there mining. At the same time, we did see some upticks in some aggression and bites, and that also could be COVID-related. People were home more, and they were around their animals more, so just more exposure of kids and so forth. But essentially, we're seeing pretty stable... Um, calls and uh, uh, improvement in response times. So uh, the overall average response time is always a little hard to interpret because there's a, a lot of calls in there that are really not time sensitive. The important one for us is the priority one calls for service, which fiscal year to, to date is hovering at 19 minutes for Eagle. So there, there's no real standard um, guideline for for. for you know, some, some other agencies to compare to. But in networking with other agencies and talking to my peers and other communities, that's pretty good. It needs to be interpreted. So these are calls uh, that are urgent. Someone is being attacked by a dog. There has been a bite. There is a dog in a hot car. There is an injured animal. There is an animal in traffic. And or police are calling for assistance. Uh, so do you have to understand that we are at the mercy of traffic and traffic patterns and times of day? We are uh, first responders, but we don't drive the kind of vehicles or have the wherewithal to fire sirens, go through intersections, and speed. So uh, for these, the, 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 the type of priority one calls that involve a person in danger, we're almost always going to be coordinating with local law enforcement. They're going to be on the scene first. An ambulance might be on the scene first. And then we're there to support them and deal with the problem from that point on. Um, but I think we're, we're doing well in that regard. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, and then, again, uh, numbers of animals impounded have stayed uh, pretty similar. Um, so, again, uh, when we get done, if you have more questions about uh, performance measures, Officer Shields is here, as well as myself. Um, diving into our budget. So, uh, broad overview, just to remind everybody, this is a cost-sharing agreement. <clears throat> it's not a uh, pay-as-you-go or fee-for-service uh, situation. It's very similar to what you see in other communities, um, particularly those that contract with a humane organization or a situation where you have a county um, 
overseeing the operation, and then they have uh, other communities that are buying into the services. So we take our overall budget and we carve out the animal control budget from that over, uh, overarching budget, and that's based on a number of different assumptions and allocations that have pretty much stayed the same for years, so it's the same methodology. <clears throat> then we take that overall animal control budget and it's allocated among all the different communities that are uh, contracting with us. And that's really the key. Um, uh, the, the big message is this is how we've been able to keep per capita animal control costs so low for communities in Ada County is that everybody is cooperating. Uh, we hear from some city councils, and it took a long time to put all these groups together. We just want to do it our own. We know our community. We really want to have our own program. We don't know about cooperating with other communities. Uh, next week, uh, i just uh, tell you, I'm over in Pocatello doing uh, an assessment and an audit of their system uh, over there, their animal services. They're a community that's about twice the size of Eagle. <coughs> um, Eagle's per capita cost is about $4.83 per capita. Pocatello's is $21 per capita. Uh, it's a community twice your size, and they pay about $1.2 million in animal services because they don't have anybody to work with. They can't share costs. Their county won't cooperate with them. Chubbuck won't work with them. So they have to run the entire show themselves, so it's horribly expensive. So what I've said in the last couple of years when we've had negotiations, you don't have to work with the Idaho Humane Society, but you're crazy if you don't work with the other communities in Ada County because it's the only way to keep costs low. It also allows a small community like Eagle uh, access to a much bigger, m m more comprehensive program with a lot of services that you'd never be able to afford yourselves, including all the veterinary care. So for this year, Idaho Humane Society's budget for 2022, and I, I don't have the overall budget for 23 because we finalized that in the fall. Uh, our overall budget's $8.9 million. 5.3 million of that is our Bird Street facility. You don't have any part of that. None of the expense of that facility is carried over to you, although that's where all the unclaimed animals end up being adopted and cared for. It's the Dorman Street facility that we run as an admissions facility and the animal control facility. That's $3.6 million this year, of which, based on, like I said, the allocations that we've done for years, uh, we're paying uh, 920400 so about 25% of that operation is funded by IHS, and then the remaining 27 is being divided up among the different communities, including the unincorporated county. Um, out of that um, uh, budget, uh, we have about 15.5 FTEs that are doing nothing but quote-unquote animal control-specific work, and then 20 that we're sharing between us, the Idaho Humane Society and the communities. Um, the payroll as a percent of the animal control budgets, about 75%. It's increased a bit over the last two years uh, because of wage inflation. It just costs labor, it costs have obviously, and this is not something that is new to any of you, you're probably hearing this from all your departments, We've had 20% wage increases over the last couple of years just to keep up with the, the job market and be able to retain employees. <clears throat> um, the facility costs are divided essentially 60% to our contracts and 40% to IHS, and that's based on uh, some performance measures, including animal intakes, whether the animals came in as strays versus coming in from owners, which you might, if you ran your own shelter, be, have the option of saying, no, we don't take those, but we do. So we cover those costs. <clears throat> so moving on specifically to um, <clears throat> the budgeted payroll costs that go into the animal control contract, uh, which is a little uh, down a bit on um, that spreadsheet I provided. Uh, so <clears throat> for animal control personnel, uh, going into FY23, we're looking at an 11.2% increase. Um, we're fully staffed with animal control officers right now, uh, and then we have the other dedicated staff uh, there providing the animal control services, including the front-end staff of the shelter desk, handling the phones, dispatch, et cetera. And then shelter payroll is a 10.4% increase. Uh, so for officers, for example, Right now, we've raised wages to $17 uh, per hour uh, in order to attract 
uh, officers that have the qualifications we need. And in 2023, we're hoping to increase that to an average starting salary of $18 per hour. Um, down in our shelter payroll, that's around 11 to $13 uh, starting wages, depending on those positions. Um, shelter staffs allocated about 60% to animal control contracts and 40% to us. Uh, and there's some other <clears throat> proportions of other positions that are integral to running the operation. And then in administration, we've actually um, uh, made that a little leaner going into 2033. We've got great leadership now at our dormant facility. Um, some of my other staff are having to spend a little less time uh, running the animal services program for the municipalities. Uh, and so overall payroll expenses are going up 7.6% for the entire contract, uh, <clears throat> um, which is uh, around 76% of the total allocated expenses, so just up a little bit. And then on operating costs, uh, here obviously the cost driver is also just inflation, uh, especially of drugs and supplies. Um, we've seen big increases, uh, but we've held uh, these expenses down to a 5.9% increase going into 2023. Uh, why are we projecting that? We have three brand new animal control vans. Uh, and so uh, prior to that, uh, we were limping along with some incredibly uh, uh, old uh, vehicles. Uh, so despite fuel costs, uh, because we see lower vehicle maintenance fees going forward, uh, it had a big impact. Um, and so um, back to the top of that spreadsheet, what it all relates to is uh, we're looking at a contract uh, income from the combined municipalities for 2023 of $2,815,431, which is a 9.5% increase. <clears throat> However, uh, and I'll just, uh, this is not a huge deal, but uh, I need to, to talk about this one note that I have on the side here about this timing issue because it could lead to some, some um, misunderstandings. So last year, due to some miscommunications perhaps, we were late getting our contracts in to some of our municipalities. And part of that was we were attempting to do a consolidated contract where everybody signed. And so we were late and it became a bit of a stalemate, stalemate in terms of getting uh, things finalized, so we agreed to subsidize the contract last year um, to compensate for essentially the first quarter of the year uh, before increases went in. And that required us to pay an additional from our share, essentially, $71,000. So if so, we're not recouping any of that money. That money's gone, but we're back to square one again this year. Uh, we're not repeating that loss. And so if you consider, take that into consideration, it's actually a 6.7% increase. <clears throat> um, we do retain some other income that come in as impound fees and, and other fines, uh, other expenses. Most of those are now going back to the municipalities and they're all individual depending on who we're <clears throat> working with and what their preference is. That's why that went down a bit. <clears throat> and then so, so the overall contract income uh, is projected uh, at two million eight hundred fifty-five thousand five hundred and sixteen. That's an eight point seven percent increase, um, or an overall <coughs> expense, and, and that's five point nine percent increase over the expense last year. Again, those numbers don't line up, and the reason is that seventy-one thousand dollars. We're not recouping anything, and we're not making a profit. It's the same deal we're just not kicking in that additional amount of money that um, uh, would be a subsidy for, for the mistake that was made last year. That sounds super convoluted, hopefully that's clear. Um, I can certainly try to answer any questions there. Bottom line for the City of Eagle, so the allocation is a weighted 50% uh, field calls and 50% population, uh, that's how we, we drive that split between you and Ada County and Boise and Meridian and et cetera. Again, that's, there's different ways of doing this. There's no perfect way of doing it. This is the way we've done it for years and it would be very similar to uh, uh, if you were in another part of the country working with a nonprofit, very common, or working with your county and sharing expenses there. <clears throat> um, from 
22 to 23, uh, the, the new contract amount for EGLE for FY23, um, 163,877. Uh, your percentage of the contract amount is 5.8%. That stayed pretty uh, consistent over the last four years or so. Um, <clears throat> and it is uh, a factor of your population, which is 6.7%. Uh, and then the last three years of experience in, in providing uh, services, how much of the field services uh, calls were attributed to um, EGLE. And uh, so that's an increase of $19,302, which, depending on how you look at it, 13.3%, or if you credited us for kicking in $6,464 last year, 12.7%. Uh, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and that's the, the, the gist of the, of the presentation. I was told to be brief, <laughs> but I'm happy to stand for any questions, uh, and, and, and as is um, Officer Shields. Okay, any questions? Okay, Councilman Pike. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jeff, for coming out again and presenting this. Um, I'll go back up to the field calls first. Yeah. The, the, how do you differentiate the attacks versus bites? I mean, bites are obvious bites, but the attack, um, is that um, injuries like a d dog knocks a kid over or... How, how do you allocate the difference on those? No, I don't want to make a mistake on definition. So okay. Dr. Shields tell you what the difference yeah. is. Okay, so the it. difference between an attack and a bite is um, a bite occurs any time that dog saliva comes in contact with human skin. So an actual contact is made and skin is broken. So that is considered a bite. Um, an attack is if the dog comes up and grabs my pant leg, but it didn't break through the pant mm. leg. Or an attack is really a reasonable fear for one's safety. So if the dog is off leash and it's charging me, it may stay three feet away from me, but there's nothing between me and the dog and I feared for my safety, that is an attack. And then follow up on that, thank you, Mr. Mayor, on that. The, the fact that an off leash dog walking and lunging for somebody or another dog uh, that would be an attack. Yeah, that, that's considered an attack. And so that exposure, does that uh, necessitate contact with PD for a report on that? Or does that come to you guys and then you direct that call back to PD for a, for a uh, follow-up if there's any civil liability in there? So um, if we have one, I'm out walking my dog. I'm out walking Fluffy and a dog charges me. It comes off its property, charges me. I get home, I'm safe, and I'm calling in. We don't require Eagle PD. But if I'm out and the dog is attacking me and attacking my dog and I'm calling 911 because it's happening right now sure. and I'm being hurt, that does, usually Eagle police will get there before we do, and we are immediately en route to support them. Um, so it just depends on the circumstances. As far as a civil matter, if it's something that happened yesterday or earlier in the day and you're safe now, we don't require any assistance from Eagle PD. We will hand that, handle that completely on our own. All right, and that's so, but it, does it count as a um, contact for not only you guys, but does, it, does the PD get uh, notified that there was a contact so there's a history of a vicious dog as a, a, you know, a, a secondary event happening with that dog? No, we would no, that it would strictly, there would be a history with our department and with us, um, but not necessarily notifying Eagle PD. Now I do um, include Chief Wilkie on all my reports every month. And, and he that's does, enough. That's he enough. does get a copy yeah. of okay. everything that I send to the city. Thanks. And then the second question, Jeff, you might have on there, um, is the um, downturn in our population estimate for 23. Um, I think you're the first one that I've heard about having a decrease in uh, the citizens citizenry for our community. Um, where did, did you come up with that? Um, I think that was provided by our CFO. So if there's any mistake in there, we could certainly correct that. Um, was that the question? Um, yeah, be, uh, yeah, because I, you see a down, I mean, this number shows a downturn in our population. Oh, and okay. 
um, we know what's coming and, and I, I don't foresee that downturn, but maybe yeah. there's something I don't know about. In terms of the percent of your population making up the contract or? You're, you're basing it on a decrease of, oh. of a citizenry for your percentage. Yeah. Um, Looks like there's a mix up in your formula or a fat maybe. finger of something. Yeah. So I don't know if you see that, but it says the Eagle population 2022 is 34,000, 33,000 in 2023. Okay. And then that obviously is going to affect your percentages too. Exactly. If, if it was a oh, spreadsheet of some kind. <laughs> yeah. It, it may have been just considered de minimis for, for this calculation, but um, we'll catch up eventually. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious as <laughs> yeah. where, where that came from. I thought yeah. there was something that. Um, typically we'll get these numbers from Compass or, or a similar, but you never know. Um, might have been a mistake there. Okay, because it does, um, the numbers do affect the percentage, so. Yes. Uh, I would also uh, note on your question about bite. So a, 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 a bite that actually breaks the skin uh, triggers a, a lot more, mm -hmm. frankly, um, potentially. Um, there, first of all, there is also quarantine that has to occur in that place or rabies testing. Uh, and then in any of these situations, an attack or a bite can trigger a dangerous dog proceedings. And I did note that you're going to be debating um, some changes in the dangerous dog laws to make it more consistent mm -hmm. with the rest of the county. Uh, and I uh, appreciate that uh, concern. That's, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? So I have a couple questions. Did you guys change your call structure and how you determine what it is over the last couple of years? Because obviously in 2018, we're up in the 9,000s. And now all of a sudden we're in the 6,000s, and my guess is yep. we have a lot more dogs and people than we did. So are we just we, being much better We did better change uh, things, including implementing a s specific new software system that's made for police departments. Um, maybe Officer Shields can speak to that, although um, it kind of predates her yeah. coming on. <laughs> so I arrived in 2020, and uh, in 2020 is when IHS invested in Omnigo. That's where those reports are generated. And previously, prior to 2020, they kind of simplified. Like, you know, it says this many barking dog calls. But in actually, in the categories, there's barking dog, a first-time call. There's barking dog, second violation. And there's barking dog, citation. So there's three types of barking dogs. But for these reports, she just kind of shrinks them down into barking dog. Um, there's with aggressive dogs, there's aggressive dog happening now, aggressive dog um, investigation where it happened before, an attack versus another animal happening now or not happening now. But she shrieks it just all down to aggressive animal and puts it in. But we do, we have, um, I can send our list of categories that tells the type of calls that we go out on. Um, but uh, the monthly reports also show that. So yes, the categories, we made more categories and we made different categories. And we also changed priority one calls over the last two years. Wait, wait, I'm just trying to understand because your, your line item here is total calls. So even if you shrunk them, my guess is you're not, even if it is aggressive first, second, or third, they're still individual calls. Or are you saying if someone called for one house and four different things in a month, it's gonna be just one call? No. Okay. No, it would be four calls. Prior to 2020, how they were getting their stats off of Pet Point, I'm not exactly sure how that worked. Okay. And um, so I don't know about those numbers. Like, I couldn't even go back and, like, get those numbers. But I can tell you from 2020, using oh. Omnigo, those are solid numbers. Okay. And I can, you can tell me, I want to see every aggressive call that you did this month. I can do that now. Um, if there's a mistake, if there's extended ETAs, I'm able to look that up now in Omnigo. But prior to that, they were using Pet Point, and it was not a very good system for providing stats to the cities, which is why they invested in Omnigo. Okay, and then one other question on that is, how are you determining a City of Eagle resident and a county resident that's in the Eagle zip code? Uh, so do you we guys... Use, we use the Ada County jurisdiction map. Um, and we punch each address into that, and it tells us if it's City of Eagle or if it's Ada County. Okay. So again, those monthly reports that I send out to you, um, on the Excel report at the bottom, it says Ada County tab, Eagle tab, CUNA tab. You can click on each one of those 
and it says Eagle, it might be Ada County, but the it might be Eagle address, but it's Ada County's jurisdiction. We're very careful about that. And we do use that map. And one time, I guess you guys um, incorporated some new areas and they, Ada Dispatch didn't even have it. And I'm like, well, my map is saying that that is, you know, City of Eagle now. And they came back a couple days later and said, oh, yeah, um, sorry, that is your information is correct. So uh, that map seems to be very current. Yeah, we have that with Meridian, too, where we'll, it'll be a Meridian address, Meridian zip code, but it's Eagle City Limits. <laughs> So oh, that also okay. is something yeah, that... Yeah, so we, I did not know that, um, mm -hmm. but we use that map, the Ada County jurisdiction okay. map, Excellent. and we punch the address into there, because uh, we're very particular about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very particular that the right city is put in the jurisdiction in Omnigo, and I go through the calls monthly to make sure that the dispatchers didn't make mistakes on that part. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more technical question. Mr. Mayor, that's also really important in terms of writing citations, obviously, because every community has different ordinances in the county. And if we don't get that right, um, it it's a big mess, obviously. Yeah. Councilman Pike? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. One more I forgot to ask, and I don't care who answers it, but um, in terms of HOA and their um, private property uh, for, for, like, playing with the ball with dogs off leash, um, we're starting to get a lot of calls on that. So um, animal control shows up and wants to cite the individual for being off-leash dog playing in the park. They're saying we're on private property because it's in our HOA uh, community area. So this is an opportunity to maybe clear the air and get it on record for how that correlates with uh, different uh, – eight, eight, well, HOAs are different a little bit, but how, how do you respond to that, I guess? Um, I'll see what Tiffany's uh, opinion is. Um, uh, for me, um, and I, I imagine if you got three attorneys in the room, you might get three different opinions, frankly. <clears throat> but uh, even on private property, there is, uh, well, certainly for some offenses, you know, there's a defense, for example, about an aggressive dog in your backyard. You climbed over my fence. You got bit. That's what you get. Front yard's different. That's a quasi-public space. Yeah, you own it, but the mailman and the kid, you know, the mailman needs to come to the door and the kid needs to retrieve the Frisbee without getting bit. Um, so there's, there's, I, I like we are the certainly, common area, the common we would, area around. That, yeah, that a common part, area part, in yeah. an HOA I would consider public ground for a lot of offenses. Now, certainly... Um, we respond uh, depending on the, the druthers of, of communities, and we don't go looking for problems. Um, if somebody has an off-leash dog and we're responding, it's because somebody in that neighborhood has complained. Um, and that's, what, that's what happened on the yeah. last... I, so I that's, that's a bit that different, and we yeah. would certainly be happy to engage with an HOA. Um, even in the park systems, a Meridian years ago told us, you know, we don't mind people letting their dog, just don't go in and bother them, it's okay. And, but then when we get mis mixed messages from the community, I went to the park and dogs were chasing me, and the park doesn't seem to care much about it. Um, so uh, that's it's kind of a tough one. I, 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 I would tend to, if somebody complained, uh, view, uh, it, it, just looking at it from a, a common sense perspective, is this really a public space and are you just sort of inviting people in there or have you designated an off-leash area because that's how communities should be dealing with these things, is saying we're going to designate these certain areas for off-leash use, uh, like the Foothills Trails or certain dog parks. Um, and, and one further thought on that, and because we're talking about um, – dog parks within our com new communities that developments and that's been brought up numerous times so jurisdictionally how do you how do you address if somebody's if we does let's say we've designated this is a dog park play area but somebody in the neighborhood doesn't like to watch this and they feel like they're going to be threatened so i know that's going to get into that attorney thing like you said at different interpretations but it's really how do you guys respond to that a call is a call, I mean, you know, for service, so. So, um, w one, number one, we don't enforce HOA rules. So, you know, they're like, oh, the neighbor has, uh, say your limit is four dogs in Eagle. 
but the HOA says you can only have three dogs. We enforce the Eagle Law because that's that's what we're contracted to enforce. Um, if there is a common area in the HOA area, as far as it being private property, it's common area. I have the right to go to that area, put down a blanket, and have a picnic with my kids. And you have the right to bring your dog in there and um, have your dog on leash in there. Um, we both have the right to enjoy our use of that space. And I am allowed to do it without harassment from your dog. So we are going to enforce the leash law there. The leash law, the way the officers enforce it, is the leash law is in effect everywhere unless posted otherwise. So if there's postings and the community has made it an off-leash park, then we will treat it as an off-leash park. And I will tell you that we treat the parks, the dog parks, as an enter at your own risk. We do not do any enforcement in the dog parks. So if someone takes their chihuahua and puts it in the big dog park with the unaltered um, borble and it gets attacked, you entered that dog park at your own risk. And that's not something that we enforce. So um, as for your HOA, a common area that people share, even though on private property, we're going to issue a citation. Now that person who's issued that citation can take their HOA rules or whatever and take it before a judge and see what the judge says about it, but we're going to enforce it as the leash law there. Yeah, I really, Mr. Mayor, I really wanted that to be on the record as what your stance was because, um, especially on my end of town, the west side, I'm getting a lot of people asking questions and it's kind of, um, I want it from the horse's mouth, no pun intended with the, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to get the facts. Yeah, so I think we were in, in, in agreement. Our understanding and our officer's understanding is to just enforce it as it was a public sidewalk. Okay, thanks, <clears throat> okay. Okay, any other questions? No? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too. I did. <laughs> I just scored for you over there. You gotta earn that. We're gonna wait for Charlie to get back. Yes, Nicole. Populations estimated between censuses by Compass and this past year because of COVID, they did not get the census completed on the same timeline as they normally do. So the correction that you normally see at the decade mark actually was delayed a year, two years. So you normally see that kind of drop down because we estimate probably higher, well, we do historically higher than what the actual census count comes in at. So you just, instead of seeing your dip at 2020, you saw it at 2020. Oh. Oh. That was a lie. Thank you. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to item 6A, Fiber Fund, Eric Zivas. Okay, Mayor and Council, as we know, this is kind of a, new thing that we're heading into in the next fiscal year um, to briefly kind of go over the budget. Uh, the original, I guess Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong with this stuff here, the original three million out of ARPA was given to us in this fiscal year. The 2.3 million, am I saying this right, Kelly? That you, the 2.3 million which you see on the for the next fiscal year is what we were proposed for fiscal year 23-22. The one question that might arise with this budget is that the 1.5 million that was appointed out of the three for the equipment in this in this budget, the $570,000 that is in this is what's left over out of that 1.5. What we did was is we took um, the water budget as an example and we ran through that because they're going to be fairly consistent between the two and threw some figures in there that we thought that would be respectable. Um, 
we've budgeted for three full-time employees with this fiscal year. So we have like a superintendent or a lead and then two technicians, which will be paid for out of this. Um, what else can I tell you? The engineering fees and all that for BRE entry point and everything, um, we've bumped that up, but obviously we have some stuff to get us through this fiscal year to make it through there. And other than that, I stand for questions. All right, is there any questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, my first question is ARPA, do we have to um, monitor that the same way we did the CARES with the COVID monies? Do we have to monitor every die? I guess I that? can answer that very surface level, to be honest, but uh, it does have to be monitored. We do track it and other spreadsheets and everything. We have to report that. Um, it's a little bit different than the CARES money, but that is tracked separately. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mr. Mayor. Yep, Councilman Bond. So Eric, on this relative to, so the fiber, what we've done to date and going forward, what's the percentage of the entire thing that ARPA has paid for versus what the city's paid for? Uh, to this point in time, the ARPA has paid for it all. All right, and then next year when we're looking at it, ARPA will still pay for basically the vast majority of everything moving forward. Um, at, at what point does ARPA run out and the city starts actually having to pay for anything? So ARPA, when ARPA, the city will never, first of all, pay for it. Well, that's okay. It will come from the enterprise fund. The people who use it will pay for it. Yep. So uh, that just depends on how we are building the system. So we will use it to build the trunk lines, the ARPA, so we can get it moved into the neighborhoods faster. And then once you move into the neighborhoods, then the people that connect it are, that connect to it are the ones that will start paying from that point forward. Yep. Mr. Mayor, follow up? Yep. So on the equipment that we've already purchased right now, um, with the ARPA funds, we'll be able to use those with other, if we go into an agreement, basically a rental agreement, other programs that we have, um, we'll be able to use that equipment as well. So multi-use. Councilman Bond, if you look, we've actually put a line item in here for um, equipment rental interfund that has a revenue and then also obviously it's not an expenditure because in the fiber fund it actually is their equipment. So with that there, Public Works, as an example, or the Water Department, we've worked out a rental agreement to where they will rent like the backhoe or mini excavator on an hourly basis and then pay back this fund for maintenance and such. All right, perfect, thanks. One more question on the yep. safety. Council uh, thank you, Ms. Fair. Um, Eric, also on the, um, these employees would be looked at the same in the same OSHA requirements for um, the safety equipment and everything, correct? They'll be required to wear the same out in the field with, um, you know, confined space ditches, um, trench, trench issues, all that. Councilman Pike, yes. Uh, actually, um, just because of the nature of the work that these technicians will be completed, uh, there'll probably actually be more safety things put in place. Uh, obviously, doing line bore operation, back truck operation, all that, there's quite a little bit of training and also safety operation. But yes, yeah, as far as like uh, uniforms or, or, or that way or okay. safety material and all that, yeah, that will be. But it's all under the ARPA funds that we get to pull that from, though. That is correct. Yeah, okay, thanks. Any other questions on fiber? No? Okay. Item 6B, capital projects, park impact fees, path impact fees, and police impact fees. Nicole Baird Spencer. No, go ahead. <laughs> I just read it from the agenda. The, the, the screen started switching. I wasn't even walked up here yet, so I was like, wow, that's cool. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, Nicole Baird Spencer, for the record. So I'm going to present to you um, the capital funds, and then I'm going to go through the uh, three impact fee funds for the city. So we're in the 19 account, if you want to flip to that page in your binder. Um, just to give you an understanding, the, the capital fund is made up of a lot of different funding sources that come into it, but um, they kind of get reallocated in different ways. So kind of just like that big spreadsheet. I've provided you both the draft capital maintenance spreadsheet and the draft capital project spreadsheet because those projects kind of nest into this fund. So if you want to know what we're spending money on, it's not quite as clear in this fund. Those sheets are actually what we're spending the funds that, that I'm going to talk about today on. So uh, your funding source, the overall capital 
budget is decreasing by 2% or by 1.5 million um, from 20 million, 20.9 million last year to 19.5 this coming fiscal year as proposed. Um, revenues are made up of uh, 2.6 million of general fund requests. According to the capital plan, that could have been as high as 3.5 million, but we did choose to try and utilize some of the funds within the, the monies within the fund before we went out for additional requests of capital um, transfers from the general fund. Um, we have a carry forward of 7.5 million, which is a decrease from last fiscal year of 10.9 million. Um, some of the expenditures that came out that caused that differentiation um, was uh, the purchase of the Melissa Sharp property, um, and then you had some other smaller purchases. You had a purchase of uh, the $2 million purchase for the park, but that came out of impact fees. We'll talk about that as a separate item. Um, you had $1.5 in FEMA reimbursements that were in this next year's budget. We had it scheduled for a million of reimbursement this past year, and that was not actualized. What happens is we put it in as revenue, but FEMA is not able to have us spend the money, seek reimbursement, and we get it back in a timely manner. So uh, you had about a million dollars of unactualized revenue in this past year's budget that will come in in the next fiscal year budget. Commissioner Mayor. Yes. No. So just explain that. Because we did, weren't able to do the project this year, we still have those funds available for next year. No, you actually did the project this year. You just are not able to actualize the reimbursement from FEMA this year. So you had to expend all the dollars out of the city's own funds, and we do not see that here as the revenue of the $1 million revenue that's coming in in fiscal year 21-22. We had to push it forward to fiscal year 23 because we didn't, we won't, re we haven't received it. Mr. Mayor, follow up? Yep. Uh, what's our, because I know historically we've said, oh, FEMA reimburses us within six to eight weeks. Um, this seems to be more than that. Uh, what's our normal timeline on FEMA reimbursements, and why is this one taking so long? Our normal timeline for FEMA reimbursements is usually about three to five months. It was reported to you last year that it would take about five to six weeks, and then we have never seen that occur, and thus the reason you're in the situation you are today. Sure. All right, thanks. So you have your FEMA reimbursement, and then you have your ARPA funds, which is the $4.4 million of carry forward. The capital count was the holding place for your ARPA dollars um, this past fiscal year. So that's right here. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yep, Councilman Bond. Uh, Nicole, you mentioned the purchase of the house. Which one was that out of? You actually took it out of capital. It was just came out of uh, general reserves of capital. It was nine. It was 900 and some odd thousand dollars. Right. Um, what we've done is that brought down part of your reserve because if you see your reserve here was ten million dollars last year And it's only seven point five this year. Okay, so that's what you're talking about. Okay, that's where you're getting your reduction in your carry forward So last year you had to 20 point You know ten point nine million of carry forward of reserve of carry forward and You only have seven point five this year. That's the difference is what, what you did with those unallocated dollars that weren't originally initially in the budget. Nope, that's okay, thanks. Okay, so your expenditures for next year. You do have a reserve account of uh, 3.8 million. This will actually be bought down because this is where we'll actually transfer the funds for that Sherry Sharp house. Not Sherry Sharp's house, sorry, Melissa Sharp's house. This actually, you'll see that come out of that reserve, so we'll see this kind of go down, but not bad. Um, you have your capital maintenance set aside. This is all your capital maintenance projects. So of the papers I provided to you, that is this list of projects. They are not enumerated individually within the budget. They just sit as capital maintenance. And so that's why I provided this sheet to you. I emailed it to you last night, and there's a co hard copy I gave to you today. Um, this is those projects. Um, you then go into kind of this marrying of these two old worlds and the new world. We used to keep every item that we constructed or project we were doing as a separate line item, and we're working away from that. In this f fiscal year budget, you'll see the current fiscal year projects. Those are your capital projects, and you'll see money allocated, sorry, for a, a $1.5 million for those projects. But we are between them, so you'll also see... <laughs> in this budget, some projects that are going forward. So you'll see the Aiken Street extension continues as its own line item. Um, or you'll see the Eagle Road Ped Bike Bridge continue as its own line item. The biggest expense coming out of the capital budget next year is your Eagle Road Ped Bike Bridge. It is shown as $3 million of 3.18 million of revenue 
and then you'll see it is shown as a $3.3 million expense. That is because we have to program it because we pay all those bills and then seek reimbursement, and those we do get within usually about 30 days from the state. Um, but we'll pay those invoices and bring them back. So we have retained in the budget our proportionate share to kind of prime that process so the city has always got funds available to pay those bills. Um, that project is scheduled to begin uh, construction in October with completion in April. So we will see it completed this fiscal year. Let's count that on the bike. Yeah, Nicole, real quick, are you talk, referring to the Aikens project? Oh, I'm sorry. referring to the Eagle Road Ped Bike Bridge. Oh, okay, um, can you go back to the Aikens uh, yes. project because it may get pushed, right? It's probably going to be pushed. <laughs> Mayor and Council, at this point in time, we have uh, worked with th this budget mirrors ACHD's adopted integrated five-year work program. If they chose to move that project, we would have to address that. Um, the, our understanding is we are receiving preliminary word from ACHD that they do not want to do the Aiken Street extension at all. It won't be pushed. It would be unprogrammed. Yeah, okay. And then those funds will be allocated where? You will have to make that decision. Yeah. Okay. I mean, That's we, a council decision. Yeah. I mean, we get to make them, but preliminary thoughts to help offset some of the deficient? Um, you know, I have I have some projects that I've identified with the mayor um, for that. I figured that was kind of a more deep down conversation you wanted to have after you got the budget That's fine. presentation. Like, yeah, um, we can have the freedom to do that, though, is my point. Yeah, you have the freedom to do that, and I, we can't, staff can give you recommendations as to that. Um, and so certainly we're hoping to align that with ACHD, but you have that flexibility. These are all general fund dollars for the most part, and so you have the ability to move them as you deem necessary. And, and I would say just my personal opinion would be that if ACHD decides to unprogram it, that we come up with more money to make sure it happens, because I think it's an integral part of our downtown and the circulation. So I don't know if it would be looking to spend that somewhere else or if it would be looking to add to it so that we could get them to actually do the project. Well, I guess so. the reason I brought that up is because if the partner, the parties that do not want to participate, we would have to think of other, other ways. Right. Right. So. Um, from there, uh, let's see. Your capital projects are on the 11 by 17 sheets of paper. They nest in. You'll see them both broken out by what's in a fiscal year reserve or a fiscal year general fund request versus a carry forward request. Um, with that, if there's any questions, um, you're not seeing any huge new projects come into the plan. You have a lot that you're trying to get done in, 24, in tw fiscal year 23 through this project. Okay. With that. Any other questions? Nope. All right. I'm going to jump into your impact fees. There we go. So your park impact fees. Um, this account is dedicated fees that are collected at the time of building permit for specifically park projects that are identified in the park's master plan, impact fee master plan. So um, at this point in time, you have an increase, a uh, 5% in increase in the fund from 5.69 to 4.32. Um, part of the reason this downturn is that we will be taking the $2 million that you purchased land for the sports park will come out of this fund. Um, from there, the only other things programmed from here is an additional $2.95 million you'll see on the big 11 by 7 spreadsheet for... Um, the continuation of the planning and work on the sports park. Additionally, you have uh, $400,000 for $400, set aside, just an earmark. It's not going to be spent this year for the city shop. And then you have uh, Terraview Park, park impact fee reimbursement. If you remember that with that park, when they build it, they will get reimbursement for their initial construction costs that we do anticipate part of that coming out this next fiscal year. Um, and then finally, you have um, Pamela Baker Park and Mace Park. So the parking at the south side of the Eagle Road Ped Bike Bridge, which is Mace Park. Um, you have money coming out of that for construction of that project. And then finally, Pamela Baker Park, which got deferred. It was originally supposed to be done in fiscal year 22. It was supposed to be all M impact fees in fiscal year 22. But when the project went out to bid, they were not able to get the project to, to get enough uh, 
contractors interested in it, they're requesting it be combined with the phase two, which was in fiscal year 23, increases and consumes all of your impact fees dedicated to that facility. So you'll see that, and then you'll also have a small capital fee that comes out of the capital plan if you choose to move forward with that project. Um, but those are the projects coming out of impact fees. Uh, I will note that this is generated by building permits, so you did not generate nearly as much money as you had initially anticipated in this fund, uh, because right now we're sitting at 275 building permits. For this fiscal year, we originally had an estimated over 600 total for the year, so we do anticipate that we will not see as much income in this in this in this fund as we had initially thought so any questions no nope. all right easy peasy mac and cheesy um, finally pathway impact fees oh not finally we got two more sorry I keep forgetting about police um, this is your pathway impact fee fund. This is your 25 account in your book. So um, again, this account went up by less than what we anticipated with the decreased number and impact uh, building permits this past school year. Um, you're holding just about just over 900,000 um, in this in this fund. This fund is one of the places that you did set aside funds for your Eagle Road Ped Bike Bridge. And if you would like to, we can look at programming our offset, our, our local share out of impact fees if you'd like to, but that's one of the things that can come out of that versus using capital dollars. Um, but from there, it's really a pretty straightforward account. The, your large 11 by 17 spreadsheet, again, identifies where you're gonna use those impact fees um, for the next fiscal year. Um, which is not much. It is 800000 for the Ped Bike Bridge potentially, but it really will be significantly less than that because we know our proportionate share is not there. Um, you then have, I think that's basically all you have at Pathway Fees. Oh, well, you have $180,000 of impact fees for Mace Park that can be used because we are building that parking lot that's connecting your trail connections, the Mace Trail, to the Boise River Greenbelt. So you'll be able to use some of that for your Mace Project. Any questions on this account? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I've got one question. Yep, um, Councilman Bike. Thanks. Uh, Nicole, the estimated 350 homes, The I think the building department's estimating 300 permits and the sewer, hook, sewer d district is anticipating 300 hookups. So I think we'd be even short on that too, unless just something. 350 was came from the building department and the planning department as the estimate for, our, for this year. Being told by Kelly. Okay. Um, that was our department's calculation. Th that's just a different number than I was told um, with the conversation with the director of the, the building department. So um, I don't know. I mean, I can only go with what he said and what you got from him as well. But there's a 50, 50 home differential right there. So that's even more of a reduction on the number. So I mean, I'm hoping that we have a better number. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate whatever the number is it's just that mr. mayor yep so if you look at the report the building report it says 350 it actually says in it in our budget book under building it does show that he has predicted 350 new home permits yeah but he so. I just okay my, my only point was there's a conversation I literally had with them a couple days ago and they were estimating 300 permits and then the sewer district was estimating 300 hookups I'm just and that's that's pretty recent info so it, there's a despair a disparity in it. Okay. All right. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Our budget says 350 though. So I just want to make sure it's clear that we're showing in our budget 350. Okay. And the reason sewer will probably always be different is because not all our homes in Eagle connect to the sewer district. You know, some are built with septic. So well, I, built, I, yeah. agree, I agree with that, but I'm just, the, the building one was the one that threw me off because yeah. um, unless there was, he was just giving me a general rounding it off to yeah. something instead of more specific. Could have been. Okay. Okay, and then finally, uh, police impact fees, and this is in a holding pattern. These are this is a fairly new account, which means usually for the first you know three to five years, we're just collecting fees to get enough capital to actually do a project. So as you can see, you have one hundred forty nine thousand dollars in this fund. I will let you know according to your your uh, impact fee uh, study. That's half of that funding is for capital and half of it is for equipment. So uh, you have your 149,000, you only have 74,000 to set aside for capital projects. But 
um, they are bifurcated and we'll bring projects forward to you. You do have on your big master spreadsheet for the capital uh, police substation that we'll be working through, but we're just identifying those dollars as being collected. Any questions? No, any questions? All right. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 6C, City Hall Bond and General Fund. Okay, good afternoon. This is your last budget workshop. Are you so sad? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Well, I'm not going to take that personally. <laughs> okay, first thing, let's, um, the bond will just take, the city hall bond will just take a couple of minutes. Um, it's, we're paying it down. It'll be done here in a couple of years. Any questions or um, we had looked into paying it off early a little bit ago, but with a bond, you can't pay it off very early because people bought those bonds. Okay. So that's kind of where we are. Any questions or anything on that? Any questions? No. Okay. Very nice. And good stuff. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. In the general fund, it, it's the catch-all for all of the other departments, or several of the other departments, excuse me, they're um, funded from the general fund. So towards the bottom of this, you'll see those transfers out to fund like museum, HPC, arts, all the recreation activities, building, planning, our office, the clerk treasurer's office, executive, just that whole host, it's all funded through the, because they're not really funds, those are departments. They're just another department of general um, with a different beginning number. A couple of things, oh, if you'll bear with me just a sec, I have a list of notes. So I just wanted to back up on the museum budget when Elena presented that, I didn't realize that on the, um, and you have a new, a new sheet in your binders. She is receiving a grant um, she calls it a SHPO grant, but it is coming from Certified Local Government Grant. And we had a match with that, and I didn't realize that when she and I were discussing it. So that budget increased by another $6,000. Um, and it's not the museum, it's HPC. So just so that you know, there's a new um, sheet in your books. We made that correction, and it's reflected in the summary budget as well. And then... On the Public Works Department budget, if you've noticed, it's quite long because we have a line item for every nut and bolt, for every department that's, or every um, building and location and everything else. So after we have the budget approved going into the new budget year, we're going to start to summarize those. So instead of having um, City Hall, a line for utilities, a line for repairs, a line for whatever, it's going to be City Hall. And if you have an interest in knowing how much has been spent on utilities or how much was spent for nuts and bolts, we'll print that detail list and it will say NAPA, nuts and bolts, or it'll say whatever, power or Intermountain Gas or water. And because the detail ledger will give that whole list and it makes a much more concise and more easily understandable budget. So that's the goal. So if, if, that's a, if that's a problem, that's fine. We can work around that. That's not a big deal. But we kind of wanted to simplify things a bit. So just so that you know that that's out there. Um, okay. So in this, in the general fund budget, that's where you'll see the law enforcement request for their, um, this next budget year. The number that I put in there, I did put in the lower amount because I didn't know which one to put in. And um, so I did put the lower amount in, but the larger amount is in the notes, so you know what that number is. Also included in here is the, um, are the requests from Crime Stoppers, um, Allenbaugh House. Who else did we hear from? Um, the Humane Society. 
all of the um, legal um, expenses for general overall that are not specific to developers or water or fiber. Those are all like consolidated in here as well. The VRT expenditures um, are they're down near the bottom of the expenses. Part of those for I, and I don't know why it ended up being split out that way. There are three components to the VRT monies that they request. One is like for the general assessment. One is for the um, our portion that helps with um, the grant monies that come in for the senior center. I believe that's correct. Helen, correct me if I am off base. And I'm sorry, Council Member Russell. <laughs> And then the other part is for like their capital expenditures for the on-demand service and things like that. So the um, the general assessment is included in the line item for professional services, which is a, a professional services and fees, which is like dues to different agencies and things that the city as a whole participates in. And um, Compass is in there. VRT is in there. There's just a handful of different things that are in there to overall everything. And then we bump it up just a little bit. For instance, that's where when um, the planning department hired that part-time um, building code enforcement person or um, development person, that's where we took that out of because it wasn't a wage. It was a contract sort of thing. So for whatever reason, that just under $18,000 amount is in there. The rest of it um, is just, it, it's pretty much the same. The Several of the line items you can see they're going to push off next year when we, um, when we do our public hearing and the notification we have to show this year and the last two years. So this just kind of gives you that last little bit and then that other year will fall off and a bunch of those line items will collapse, which will be great. Um, can't really think of much else that's super interesting, but I would love to discuss whatever you want to discuss. Ms. Greg, I have yep. Thank you. I have one question in terms of the senior center. Um, was there any funding allocated for improvements like the flooring and stuff from the last budget? Because we don't have that for this budget. Um, um, was there anything allocated in the past that didn't get, was, was out just set aside for them or we don't have anything in the general fund budget i believe there may be something in the capital plan yeah with the capital plan we didn't is prioritize that in or the, it was or it was a discussion i remember there being a discussion but it is not in in it's not in this budget and it's mm -hmm, the flooring yeah I know, I know it wasn't on the list of capital improvement plan we it was it didn't make it the cut there but the, fa the question was because they saw some flooring, and maybe Eric or Nicole can help with that. Um, I just don't know what to tell them when we, um, we were in the assumption that there was going to be some building improvements for them and how we we're going to. two capital projects for the senior center. One is an exterior painting of the senior center, and one is a remodel. Neither are being done at this point in time because they are the, the, the exterior shouldn't be done until the interiors decided what we're going to do. But we didn't do the interior because originally it was scheduled as a partnership project and no partnership has been established. So it's not in the capital plan that way. Now, if it's in Eric's, Eric's saying it's not in the public works budget either. So no, there is no flooring planned for the senior center today. Okay. Thanks. I also have some information about the revenue if you have an interest in where our money comes from. Um, this year, we have one of the lowest levy rates in the state of Idaho. Um, and the property taxes that we'll receive this year won't be enough to even cover the library request and the law enforcement contract request. Those will be supplemented through the other revenue sources that we have. This is, Ada County does such a great job. Oh my goodness, I just have to tell you, 
they put together these fabulous spreadsheets and um, with all of everyone in the whole county, every taxing agency in the county, all of their information is pre-filled and the, um, the formulas in, I love an Excel spreadsheet, oh my goodness, but the formulas in these, it's just, they're just massive, it's crazy because the way that they figure, now they made everything so complicated, the way that they figure the levy rates, it's plus this, minus that, and then stand on your head and twirl. So it's really, it's really crazy. So the levy rate for annexation is just a scotch different than the levy rate for new construction and just and, and regular because the annexation may include operating properties that have been annexed into our ours or anyone else's jurisdiction. So that's why you see two different levy rates there. And they send you all of the information for three, two, and one um, to figure your, your property taxes from. And then when next week they will finish up, the Board of Equalization with the county will finish up next week and they're still working on personal property exemption information. So we won't have actual final marketable value numbers yet for a couple more weeks. But um, they will send us an L2 that is like pre-filled with a bunch of the information and then we pick option A, B, or C and it goes doop and away we go. So it's, it's cool how they do that. But if you have any questions on the property taxes, I budgeted for 1%, um, which down here on the bottom you can see what property taxes would be for the different taxable values. And I, I wasn't sure what number a property value to pick, so you can kind of get an idea of what their city taxes would be for those values. Mr. So, oh. first of all, so the, the reason we picked the 1% is it's the same thing we did last year, mm -hmm. and that was to make up for the 10% that the Bill 389 was taking away from new construction. So that's why we kind of chose that as a not taking a lot of it, but yet taking some that kind of made up for that. So anyway, that was kind of where we were on that. Go ahead, Councilman Vaughn. So, Mr. Mayor, on this, I guess, I asked on this one, why we didn't do 3%, um, honestly, relative to a $750,000 house, you're talking a $5 per year difference, um, as opposed to the city would get an extra $100,000 to do. Um, one of the biggest things I, I continuously talk about and was brought up perfectly right before this is um, what we retain from taxes right now, we are, we are a deficit spending city. We, our police budget, uh, hell, our police budget almost takes up the entire taxes, then the library and all those we have to at some point start to, to catch up and reconfigure. I think we're doing a really good job right now with the commercial component. But, I mean, literally when we talk about dispersed funding, the difference between 1% and 3% for an individual homeowner with a $750,000 house is literally $5 per year. But for the city, it's $100,000. Um, huge difference. I mean, that's kind of so... I don't know if we want to talk about that now or not, or if we can adjust it to no, definitely 3%. Not. Um, I... I yeah. yeah. Like if this budget is your guys's. Yeah. I just start with it and, and the staff does and so on and so forth if you want to go to three, but I didn't want to go more than one. <laughs> so can I, can I piggyback on uh, Councilman Bond's thing is the interesting. So our citizens are basically getting paying forty dollars $40 per hundred thousand dollars. Right. I mean, says and I'll just give you an example of a different city. Good, bad or indifferent. But just for a People cutting apples and oranges. Um, Star uh, gets fifty-seven dollars per hundred thousand for their their. Um, so we're, we're, there's a deficit right there. Um, we have to maintain our quality of life here in the city of Eagle, and I think the expectation and the values are where I'm, I'm in agreement with Councilman Bond that we have at least make a reassessment of looking at. Um, yeah, we're, we're, it's great that we have a, the 0 0.0004 bond, or I mean a levy, but at what expense um, are, are with the influx of people? And people don't like to hear tax in improvements but or tax increases, but if you remember two years ago, we, we foregoed the foregone. Yeah, and so we, we can actually take the 3% plus the 1%, and we can't cap it. We have to cap it out at 8%, but we have, we have given breaks in the past and I don't know if it's coming to um, showing a deficit now that maybe um, can't can't waters under the bridge already but can we make up for something that we can make sure that we've increased the um, 
service level that's needed for the citizens of Eagle by by um, making this adjustment. And uh, I, I don't think any of them would be so far off to say that uh, they appreciate the fact that we did forego the foregone. <laughs> you know, that's the only way I could say it. But um, they did not. We did not take that three percent a couple of years ago. So. Uh, there was a savings um, there, but at, at what deficit spending are we at now? That um, we can't cut our nose off to spite our face. My mom always would say, and I, I want to make sure that we're doing due diligence for the service levels that the, the Eagle citizens expect, um, and that that's important. And one note, I did make contact with uh, the building um, director, and he had our conversation was accurate at the time, but he had had a conversation past that before he submitted his paperwork with planning and zoning and they made an adjustment with that oh, so very good. that's Thank so you. the 350 is accurate but the information I obtained last week is not it got changed bet between now and then so I just want to make clarification on that the, um, but we are still at a uh, at a reduction of, of what's needed and uh, once service levels go down, like I said before, you can't. You, once you get behind the eight ball, you'll never play cat. You can't catch up. So we need to make a decision as a community, and we're the leaders of the. You know, we're the representatives of the community. I don't want to say that we're the leaders, but we're the representatives of the community, and they're expecting us to do our due diligence and make the tough decisions for those things. And I think this is one of them. Thank you for confirming that with Steve. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or direction from the rest of the council about 1%, 3%? Well, Mr. Mayor, I feel strongly that we look at the 3%. Yep. Yeah, I agree, Mr. Mayor, with that. Yep. Yeah. Same. All right. Sounds Mr. Good. Mayor, if I might, um, just, just to make sure, because this was something I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with Ada County yesterday. The gal that works in this office is just nicer than heck, and she's working from home. And I think she was she was chatty, and it was great. I learned so much. And um, so the 8% cap is the 8% cap, but foregone, the 1%, doesn't, it doesn't add into the 8%. So right. we are allowed to take, you know, 1% of well, whatever, blah, blah. But it doesn't add in. So if, it, if the 1% pushes, it o pushes us over 8, it, it's fine as long as it's only the 1% that we're allowed to take. Okay. So, just want to let you know. All right. Okay. Um, any other, what else can I, any other questions on revenue that I can help with? Or? Mr. Mayor. Yep, Councilman Bond. Uh, the only one kind of relative to this, uh, and I don't know if this would be or if we can do it later, um, would be, the brief that we did um, relative to the tax bill, Nicole did it last year and the year before, I think is, is a really, it was a fantastic brief specifically for the public on really what the tax bill is because 90% of the time when I'm talking with people, they said, well, my taxes are this much. I'm like, well, like we get 4% of that. Um, it's like, that. Yeah. so I don't know if we, now is not probably the time, but if we could schedule uh, maybe Nicole or somebody to do that again, I think it would be a really good one just as a, it's a really good, I know we have it on the website, Put it back on there, and then just a, a really good brief. It's I think, um, especially this time of year, when we go through this, um, it helps explain this a lot more. So when we talk, it gives a really good breakdown of here's really what the distribution is, where those funds are going, and when we say, oh, we're going to go three percent, it's like, oh, it's like it's five dollars. Um, it's one cup of coffee. Thanks. Sounds good. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, yep. Uh, uh, didn't we? Didn't we? Um, we had those those numbers, and I don't know last year when the COVID year messed us up. But um, wasn't it nine point two percent of the the taxes only come to the city of their taxation? It was at nine point two percent. It's eight percent, well, isn't it? No, back in the this was an old number that I, I had, but uh, for you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was it just eight percent? It could be eight now, but I mean, just to, I want the public to be aware of yeah. there's, that there's not, it's minimal. Zero tax pay. Like I said, I had an old, my, my, my last list was old, so uh, maybe an update, like Charlie, like you said, would be good. Well, I was actually going to say, it's like a cup of coffee. I'm like, what am I talking about? Like, you get a five dollar cup of coffee now. Better ask me. 
fiscal year 21. It was two years ago. So um, I'm assuming that you just want that information. 8%. So it was what you gave us. 8%. City of Eagles, 8%. Yeah, 8K. That's the update. And that was 21. I mean, these numbers could be updated, but this was this the last time we did it. That's the only one. Yeah. That's the only time we did it. Yeah, that was the COVID thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No? Okay. Can I ask for a couple of things then? Yep. <laughs> if you don't have questions, I do. <laughs> um, so at me. Move that out of the way, and that one too. In, darn it. I think I started putting too many things in here, and it didn't want to open. In the front of the binders is the summary sheet for all of the departments all together. And so our new overall budget is 60 million, and I'm sorry. 60 million, 410,000. Thank you. 42. Thank you. <laughs> it, I tried to put that on P drive, and it is full. <laughs> so if today, by approving a tentative budget, you do, you do not have to stop working on it, you don't have to stop talking about it but it gives us plenty of time for publication. What it does is it sets that top level that we can't spend any more than that $60 million amount. And so if you felt so inclined that you wanted to approve a tentative budget of that $60 million amount, and then um, we can work the property taxes in as you directed today to 3%, if that is what you prefer. Um, but we can take revenue from um, because we funded some carryover and some reserves and so we can move that additional money that would move from property that we get from property taxes and put it in one of those other like in the carryover or in the reserve um, and not change the bottom line we can we can make that adjustment not change the bottom line or we can change the bottom line whatever you prefer but as I understand it the City Council meeting Tuesday it's fairly light, so we could have further discussion if you'd like. If you would prefer just to wait until the hearing and discuss with the public, and I mean, you still have to present a budget to them, right? But um, but you can um, you can continue to have discussion on it and work on it. We just can't go higher. We would just go lower, or we'd shift right and left. So, but I would ask for you to consider setting a tentative budget today. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Council so Hall. we would just we would just term the uh, tentative budget of the sixty million. That's it. With the if we wanted to the potential three percent. Um, yes. Well, what it is is we're required to set a tentative budget. It has to be noted in the minutes of the meeting, and then we put the public notice out for the um, public hearing on the 9th of August, and the budget can go anywhere from there. I mean, you can well not up. Excuse me, not up, but it can go anywhere from there. So. Um, you can adjust it how you like. Ms. Mayor. Yes, Councilman Bond. So we would, the tentative budget would be here. I'm just talking about should we, if we're to make a motion, should we do tentative budget as one motion and then the 3% if we wanted to do that as a second or can we put them together? I think you can just put them both together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Councilman Bond. I'd like to make a motion that we have a tentative budget of $60,410,042 and that we increase the percentage from 1% to 3%. I second that. And there's a second. Any more discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Discussion on just clarifying that that's, is that scenario one or two for police? Right Thank now you. we have the, the scenario, the, the uh, right now in this budget it has everything. Everything. Okay. So we're at for but the additional we, expenditures right. for police. Okay. Exactly. Just want to clarify no, that. No, no. I'm so sorry. No. It's it, one. It has the lower. Oh, you have the lower yeah. one in there? Yes, I have the lower oh, one thought, in there. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's the one I put in. Yes. Okay. But we have the, Mr. Bear, we have mm -hmm. the flexibility for that on the. Yes. You do, but that means yes. you'll have to cut from somewhere else. Yes. Or unless else you make this. Unless we are, yeah, we're. Increasing the $60 million amount right. to include scenario two. Yep. I think we'd have to have the exact number note for our tentative Correct. budget. Yeah. Uh, right, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, Ms. That's a confusing. No. 
Mr. Mayor, I guess real quick is if we keep it at the current one, we basically have identified we cannot go up. So what we are saying is that under scenario one for the police, that is what we currently have. If we want to go to scenario two, we have to cut something else, right. which I'm totally okay with. Okay, yeah. well, That's, Ms. I just Ms. wanted to clarify. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up right. because that that is one of your, it's no secret, that's one of my pitches that <laughs> I want to find funding for that. So um, whatever, how, we have to do 60 million 400 plus, um, I'm, I'm good, I'm good with, that's because it's tentative. We can, we can massage that we before the more. final. You can massage it. You can't, you can't, go if, can't, go you can't massage it after I publish it or we republish. Yeah. Um, one, one suggestion I might make is that Thank if you, you want to stick with the 60 million, um, because I do believe the minutes need to state that and I should have brought that additional number. I didn't think that we'd move off the one. Um, we have a line item um, called, um, it was the leftover like COVID money that we set, that the city set aside for emergencies and we could move some of those funds. It's um, 01041019001900. And so we could move that difference from there, right, to the law enforcement contract and they would, they would wash. And so the budget. For scenario two. Yes, for scenario two. And so they would wash and, and, and that bottom line would still remain the same. And then we could work on building that back up next year. Okay. And is that the motion that, Charlie, is that what would you? No, the uh, motion right now is just budget as is, and then we, will, we can identify how we're going to do that, massage the budget later. Yeah. Right now I just want, that's our, that's our cap and 3%. Is discussion still? Are we still in discussion? Yeah. Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So we do have the ab ability to find the funding for scenario B for the law enforcement. Within the existing budget, yes. Rob from Peter to pay Paul, and I don't mean Rob when I say that. No, but then we but could reallocate next year for the difference. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and resupply the line item that we're borrowing from, right? Absolutely. This is, that's your motion that yeah. I seconded. No. Yes. Well, yeah. the, the motion is just, I know, is, that's the budget. We're not taught, like, we could theoretically say we're just going to stay with A. I mean, that's, we're not massaging it right now. The massaging would be, I guess, a later discussion, unless mm -hmm. you want to talk about if, it. If you want to talk about it, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Nope. Um, if you want to talk about it Tuesday evening, we can put it on the agenda and, and re, um, rework those lines but we need to publish Wednesday morning if we're gonna do that Tuesday. Or we can publish like this, and that bottom number doesn't move because we take some money from already what is an expense line item and put it down here. It's re Mr. Mayor, it's reallocating the funds exactly. to a different area. Yes, exactly, and thank you. Fine. And that's fine. Charlie, if that's what you said, then I still second that. It, yep. Yeah, it's not, well, yeah. Mr. Mayor, I just, yeah. just want him to know that we're not reallocating any funds right now. No. It's just no. that. Right. All we're saying yeah. is the maximum amount our budget can be is the six million or sixty Four. million. Yeah. Sixty Four. Four hundred. Yeah, exactly. It just requires us uh, by making it that it requires that we have to adjust the budget or something at a later time. We can't go over this. That's all I'm saying. We're capped. We're not going to add to it. We just have to make cuts or well, adjust we have or whatever. Room with Mr. Mayor, with, with Kelly's telling us is we have the flexibility later. So I'm in agreement with your motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Um, All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh. aye. Do we need a roll call? Do we need a roll call? No. No. <laughs> All those opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Item seven, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carries.